Here's another example, second example of how you might see the mean value theorem tested on your AP test. So here we've actually seen this problem before. A car is traveling along a straight track. We have some values of the velocity function given to us and some values of the acceleration function given. And we know that velocity and acceleration are continuous for 0 to 60 seconds. We've been asked to prove that there is some time t at which a of t equals 0, which the acceleration of the car is 0. So we looked at this back when we learned about the intermediate value theorem because we looked at these We looked at these acceleration values and tried to decide, could we use the intermediate value theorem to prove that a of t equals 0 for some value of t? We said that we could have if there were any negative acceleration values anywhere, because then we would have well, one acceleration value below 0 and one acceleration value above 0, and we'd know that somewhere we'd have to cross the 0 line. But here, since there are no negative acceleration values, that doesn't work. So we're going to have to try our new tool, which is the mean value theorem. So the trick to the mean value theorem is to be able to figure out an A and a B for which the average rate of change of the function you care about is equal to the derivative value that you care about. So here, we've been asked about the existence of an acceleration value. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so we actually want to try to apply the mean value theorem to the v function. So here's what we need. We need two values, a and b, of the v function so that v of b minus v of a over b minus a will equal 0. So you have to ask yourself, is what would I have to do to this fraction to make it equal to 0 in the numerator? Well, I'd need, well, to make the whole fraction 0, I'd have to make the numerator equal to 0. So I'd need v of b minus v of a to equal 0. That's going to happen when velocity at point b equals velocity at point a. So look in your, in your velocity line for any two velocity values that are the same. And you can see I've got here two negative 20. So that's just what we need to use the mean value theorem on the v function. So I'm going to leave those points circled. And to use the mean value theorem, I need to do two things. I need to find the average rate of change using the a and b values that I've picked. And then I need to write up my answer using the mean value theorem. So I'm going to do that separately. You can do it in one line. I'm going to do it separately just for convenience here. So we want to say that v of 25 minus v of 0 over 25 minus 0 is going to equal negative 20 minus negative 20 all over 25, which equals 0. And again, that's supposed to equal the derivative value I care about. So here I've indicated that I know I'm going to use 25 and 0 as my a and b. And I know when I find the average rate of change of the v function there on that interval, I'm going to have 0. So the only thing that remains to do is to write up our answer using the mean value theorem. So let's see if this works. So I pre-typed this. You wouldn't want to erase what you had to show the average rate of change. But here you go. This is the second part we need, now that once we figured out the average rate of change and we found an average rate of change that will equal zero, this is the write-up we do. Since v of t is continuous and differentiable, the mean value theorem guarantees that there exists t, notice I've used the same variable that they used, zero is less than t, which is less than 25, such that v prime of t equals zero. I include this a of t because I want to match what they asked me to prove. So uh, one other fine point. We know that v is continuous because that's given. We know that v is differentiable because its derivative, a of t, exists. So there's your write-up to use the mean value theorem.